<clears throat> okay. Um, let's start. Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, this is my video paint over video that I promised on August 20, 2021. Um, it's been 100 and... 19 days since I said that, which is almost a third of the year. So, again, sorry. <laughs> but now, um, I'm going to go in order of how I received them and how I did them. Actually, I did them in this order. Uh, the first one, which I think I have already opened, is the scoop one. The scoops one. I, I was just modifying a couple of things. Uh, the original drawing uh, looked like this, you know, it's pretty good already, so me doing a paint over, over to, to, to change stuff, uh, I feel it, it would be weird if, it, if I just painted all of these um, pieces again in my style, I, I don't think that that's helpful at all. So with this piece, with all of the pieces, what I did was focus on a couple of um, of elements. This was, uh, was described as follows. Um, this is one of those uh, pieces where the idea was pretty clear in my head. I get into the nitty gritty of depicting action both in a dark rainy exterior and a bright interior. Kind of got away from me. A fresh pair of eyes could do some good. Okay, so I don't think the the piece is wrong. Uh, in, in how it depicts it, I, I think it's one of those pics that if it was done in a style that was a bit more subdued with the tones in terms of uh, of contrasts and, and you know and and the characters popped a lot more from the background, you know because they they are very bright, but they mix a lot with the with the background. Um, I think that would have helped it. Uh, already as it is, without changing anything other than that, it will help the piece a lot to bring those characters a bit forward. Um, let's say, let me do it right now. Um, something like what, um, let's see, you know, something like this, where you can see them better at this distance. I think, you know, just barely it doesn't have to be crazy you know you don't have to go super dark because it, it actually makes them look kind of <laughs> evil but you know something where you bring them forward I, I don't know if i did that in the in the paint over but i think uh, looking at it now again after all this time and I, I, i've actually been thinking a lot about this piece because i i felt like i couldn't make it better uh, uh because it's so different from from my frame of thinking I'm, I'm pretty much a fantasy oriented guy i'm not i think i am um destroyed some of these uh this geography yeah some of it is kind of gone <laughs> but but um but this is so far away from what i usually do that it's kind of hard to be honest with uh with a review without uh, being prescriptive and without denying your ideas and uh, I don't want to do that because your ideas I think are pretty cool. The idea is very interesting. I think I could look at artists like Guwe's, uh, G U W E I Z. Uh, he is amazing at depicting these um, these everyday life uh, scenes. And I think he was one of the first to do it, and, and now a lot of people do it. Uh, they just copy his style. But he's the one that has uh, uh, always luminescent uh, earrings to, to to focus on the face. That kind of kind of cheats that way. But he's amazing. I would recommend looking at his work. He has a lot of uh, he has a, he has a series on uh, convenience stores actually, which is really nice. Um, uh, that is that for this initial kind of look at it. So I don't think it's wrong the way it is. Uh, I think maybe the way I could have done it could have been a bit different, uh, which is this. I changed a lot of things. I might have gone over it because I'm kind of uh, 
excessive with my color choices a lot of the time. Um, yeah, maybe even if we had this kind of like this. Let's see if it works. Yeah, it's kind of funny. It kind of works. <laughs> Let's see if we change the tone of them. Saturation. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> so let, let's, let's add that there. Okay, so um, so maybe, you know, something like this, where what I wanted to do for the most part was focus more on, on them, because in the, in the first piece, in the original piece, what I saw was that they were kind of very, very tiny in this image, which could work. Your idea could be, okay, our little, you know, box. Which is cool. I, I like that. Um, I'm I'm not sure about a couple of choices here. Like uh, I know this is common in convenience stores and stuff, and and you probably reference this from an actual storefront. Uh, but this line right here, uh, this black line right here, uh, doesn't really help the the composition because it kind of divides it into the top part, which is their heads, and then it's their legs, which have a lot of contrast. Uh, if I had done this in in a piece of mine, I, I would have probably, you know, reduced the contrast uh, down here so it's not uh, it's not so distracting, uh, you know, and so we can focus more on the characters. Again, this this comes with the same issue as the background kind of eats them alive because the patterns in the background uh, are very similar. Uh, to the characters themselves, so uh, you know this this light dark patterns, uh, and I think uh, it can be confusing at a, at a first glance. I'm sorry if if if, if I can't be understood. Understood. I don't usually speak English. I'm sorry uh, about that. Um, I'm going to try to see if I can get subtitles going uh, for this uh, before uploading. Uh, okay. So let's, let's continue. So what I did at first, I was talking about, was uh, focus the image a bit more. Uh, you know, I, I basically made it bigger and I moved the guy away from them. Uh, basically because uh, he looked a bit like he was looking back at them and because he was kind of in the middle. He's at the center of the image. He's this guy uh, at the center of the image and I thought it worked a bit better if I just move moved him to the side so this moment is more about them you know and then you you can eat uh, you can consume the rest of the image on its own uh, I thought that was cool um, I also obviously you can notice the biggest difference is the color choices uh, I decided to go for a way more expressive um, unrealistic lighting right um, uh, this is not how a convenience store looks a convenience store looks um, way closer to this than it looks to this but what I was looking at was reference from different coffee shops where people would take pictures uh, in a rainy day from the inside uh, and sometimes from the outside as well and, and what I noticed was that in those, the cozy feeling came from these warmer tones assisting the, um, you know, the, 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 the a scene and the, the moment. So I, I did that. I, 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 I gave this a bit more of a, um, well, a lot more of a warmer tone on the inside, even though I know. This is not how a convenience store looks. This is a this is a choice that you can make. Something more subdued if you want. You can maybe make the uh, front area, you know, the outside area of the convenience store cooler in tone, so it looks warmer in your version, you know. Uh, so instead of having this, uh, where the, the this part looks really really warm to me, uh, and I had a version right about here you know but it doesn't look as warm you know it's just a bit warmer um, you can do it even more if you want 
Uh, let's see. I think it's this one. Yeah. Yeah, maybe you can go you know, just something like this. It's already a lot more than it than it used to be. So I think that's interesting. I think that's, that's pretty useful. Um, let's see. Yeah, that doesn't matter because I. Uh, oh, this is a lot. <laughs> yeah, I just realized this is a fucking lot. I'm sorry about the story. Actually, I'm sorry. There you go. There you go. Yeah, something like this, right? Uh, it's it's not perfect. So obviously, obviously, uh, you took a long time doing your piece, and I did take some time doing the paint hour, but 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 the idea is not to redo it. Uh, I get the I get what you're trying to get at, and and I think. Um, it could benefit from making the composition a bit more uh, focused on them. I know sh they are not in a bad place compositionally, but I also feel there is an entire half of the image that is not being used. So you can have that, or you can just have this, right? Make it like a Polaroid. You could just have a square composition. That's not, you know, unthinkable or even a portrait composition you know like you just have them be there and probably have something different in front of you uh i i think that's that's basically it for this i i didn't want to make this oh there you go this is why it looks so weird to me just now uh yeah there you go. This is this changes the <laughs> the tone of it because that was, it was a bit insane. Um, there you go. Um, so you know something like that. I did change a bit here, you know, so it has less contrast than it had before. I think you need to have uh, a focus point, and the focus point should be here. They should be. Um, easy to look at you know if, if I look at them at them at this size which is what most people are going to look at them at you know if you look at them on new grounds they're gonna look like this that's it that's the they're you know the as big as they're gonna be seen at unless you download the image or click on the image uh, and if you look at them on Instagram the same on Twitter the same people are just going to see the thumbnail and in the thumbnail version uh, notice how your character kind of blend a bit with the background. So I know this doesn't have to do with, you know, capturing that feeling, but I think um, it could benefit the piece to have uh, just a tiny bit more contrast uh, between these characters and the background. Uh, and, uh, uh, yeah, it's basically that. I have a couple pictures here of cities in the rain. If you want me to send them to you, I can. I have no issue with that. I can just save them. Um, what I noticed with your rain, I think, was a bit um, in uh, your rain. I th I think was interrupting the image a bit more, a bit much. Um, I understand this must be something like a fibers or a cloud filter, or a noise filter, or something like that, uh, or a you know, um, how is it called? Yeah, I think it's noise on, on Photoshop or something, I don't know, with a motion blur or something similar to that. Or maybe it's just a fiber um, filter being uh, skewed. Um, but if you notice in, in, in real life scenarios and in, in, in a photograph, uh, the... The, the 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 photograph shows that the more you go into the background is the more the uh, rain is visible right because here you can see some of it and here you can see the entirety of it kind of being pushed into the background um, because it's every layer of droplets. 
on top of each other. Um, so up front is really hard because you're also focusing a distance away from yourself. So um, the, the front ones are, are kind of hard to see. Um, I I think uh, this is kind of excessive, you know, this, this rain you have here in this area, um, in this area. Sorry, I'm on a lower layer. In this area right here, I think uh, it's a bit excessive. I think it adds up a bit too much noise. When the idea is, yes, there is rain, but, you know, we shouldn't forget about this, right? And I, and I think even though these are the two main characters, the composition doesn't really point at them that much. He's the only one that is kind of looking this way. But, you know, everything around here doesn't really look uh, look this way, and, and these lines kind of point that way. So that's why I would favor a composition that cuts out here, which is basically what I did. Uh, I didn't want to remove all of it, you know, so I just kind of had it here. I think it worked. I probably have something uh, on this glass pane to, you know, something fun that is ironic. Or um, you know that that reflects of it on the picture, you know, like uh, the, the the name of the shop or whatever uh, they have a nad or something on here. That is like uh, uh, some something that reflects on this image as well. If you want, I don't know. It, it's just something that I could do probably um, that I, that would also help. Um, with uh, this pane of glass that that is in here that it's kind of hard. The reason I said that about the rain is mostly because I feel that with this picture, it looks like the rain is inside of them, you know, inside of this, uh, this area. And, and it's kind of weird because we would see some of the rain here, but it but it couldn't look this way. This looks like the rain is way um, inside of the uh, of the convenience store. Uh, you have to imagine that these lights are actually not hitting this rain as much, and they're you know, we're, we are seeing the the rain, the the lights through the rain, so they would probably be blown out. They'll probably have other properties. You know, I I. Yeah, I think I went a bit overboard with this, but you know, this is what I mean. When you look at lights on the rain, they kind of become this this um, very blurred image. Again, don't pay attention to me if you don't feel like this has any value. Uh, I understand that I'm not an expert on everything, you know, which is what it, what I could have tried to do is you know have less of this rain be noisy. I'm more of it being, um, yeah, I'm pretty sure I had a ring there. Uh, being kind of, you know, subtle like this. You know, I, I, I kept this subtle. And this one, you can barely see it. Uh, but if you had it you know, in other places of the image, maybe. Yeah. But, but overall, I think you did a good job. Um, I think the image was good already. And using call and warm tones could help a lot. Another way that you could have done this is by um, by having the composition be uh, the other way around, where you have the characters talking in front of the image, and they are looking out, like you're looking them from behind, let's say, the same picture you have, like this. You know, but what the hell is this? There. 
the same image you had, say like this, but with our characters kind of sitting down from here, uh, and you have them all on a bar or whatever they were sitting in your image, and they are like down here, you know. This could, you know, play with them through this composition. And then this guy and this guy that is, you know, sleeping. I mean, like this. And, um, and instead of, let's remove this. Instead of looking from outside, you're looking from inside, and maybe you have the door like this, and whatever, you know, to, to point out that this is a convenience store, or whatever, you can maybe, you can have this reduced if you want, and, um, there you go, let's have a, like a clerk or something, whatever, and this is kind of bland, but these guys have their own kind of warmer tone. You know, these guys right here have their own warmer tones, especially the ones that are talking to each other. And they are being caught by this very, very, um, you know, cool, very, very chill background of the city being um you know rainy and we can have a really nice imagery uh, because you can see the city you know and, and it is in the rain are gorgeous you know with these tones for example you could have something like that and you can have the guy that we just saw in the uh, original image that you made you know like oh no i'm, I'm lonely i don't know I don't have my umbrella. Whoa. You know, something like that. And he could have, you know, made out of basically a gray and blue. Yeah, something like that. And use this you know, as a compositional tool to point at them and focus on this part right here. I think that could work. Um, Again, this is probably how I have done it. From the other way, I think there are more more choices, uh, but you could do it however you want. Um, you know, this way works perfectly fine. Just maybe amp up the difference between the nice moment and the shitty outside. Okay. Uh, listen to me, don't listen to me, this is not sacred, uh, uh, I'm not trying to be prescriptive, you can do whatever you want, you know, this is a, a learning process. I really, really like this guy, I'm so sorry I cut him out, he's awesome, like, he looks great, <laughs> I just didn't think um, he should be in the composition. Um, okay. Uh, so Andy857 asked me about colors, rendering, shading, and he said something towards cell shading, yes. So it's not the talkative type, apparently. Uh, so let's try to get that uh, going. Yeah, right? Okay. So this is the original piece. Uh, if you zoom in, you start noticing a couple of things that I did correct throughout the uh, process of working on this piece. The main issue I have with the color of this piece is the background being all one shade, basically, because it kind of doesn't assist the the perspective. The background being super busy, it makes it complicated to, to, to look at the piece, but it's fine because it character isn't complicated so you kind of can't ignore the background means kind of um, bed of leaves or feathers of or whatever they are 
um, and you know the character pops because they are way more simple. It's it, it's not a bad idea in that regard. But you know there were certain things that I don't think assisted the image in terms of uh, making the the character pop. Uh, while the character pops naturally because of their uh, their their simplicity in, in, in tones and 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 and, and, uh, and in their shading, they also go back and forth and they make these very confusing patterns like this part right here is very confusing uh this part right here you know it makes you wonder where the leg is going if it's going this direction sorry i'm using my mouse uh this direction or if it's coming uh toward the camera you know it's kind of complicated i'm gonna use uh green in this because it's complementary so it's easy to see so you know you don't know if this is coming toward the camera or not. So, uh, in my opinion, uh, the biggest problem wasn't the color choices per se, but were the way this was being shaded, which was something um, in the clarification you asked about. And I'm, I'm going to have for this one both of these images side by side. Let's have them here and here. Okay. So what you notice in, in, in my version, first of all, I um, I made the background darker, closer to the camera, and um, lighter, uh, far away from the camera. I didn't want to go too overboard with it, but I did want to change it um, a bit, because I didn't think it was very uh, clear in terms of the space this character was occupying. Okay, and because the background changes in shade, that helps a lot with things that don't change in shade, because that means everything that stays the same suggests, oh, this is on the same plane. This is not going super far away. This is the same. So that was one of the things. Uh, another obvious change is the fact that I added cast shadows as if we had a light coming from you know the left uh the left of the image you know casting down on this character so we have a shadow here that helps you know popping her out of the background if you look at this to you know which one pops out the most i i think mine uh, that's a bit better uh, in that regard. I also simplified the shadows a lot with this one uh, because I I I think yours uh, there is a lot of shadows that mm, that are common in your work that I don't think uh, are. Um, the best way to shade in cell shading. I'm not an expert on cell shading, obviously. Uh, if you look at anything that I do, it doesn't have cell shading. Uh, but one thing that I do appreciate from cell shading is the simplicity of shadows. And your shadows have an issue uh, of kind of enveloping things, kind of being always on the edges, always on the contours of things. Uh, but never really defining those volumes. So, for example, if if I look at this, um, these shadows right on, on the breast area, they uh, they are here, but they don't really indicate that the volume of this breast is somewhat like this. Oh, well, let me do it in another layer. And the volume of the breasts is basically this, you know, and this, and this, you know. And uh, these shadows kind of flatten the, the, the chest area. It looks like there is a flat disc right here. It's a flat surface, you know, and, and 
and it shouldn't it should, it, it should feel like there is something what is somewhat a, of an spherical shape uh in here uh the same happens a bit with this area of the knee with this area right here i don't think it works very well i think some shadows uh don't make much sense uh, uh, in terms of of what you're trying to do uh, you know like this area right here I think it's very confusing the same with this I know sometimes you feel like you want to put a lot of uh, shadows and light in places because oh the light is coming from whatever place so every shadow should be this way and every light should be this way but shadow and light behave differently um, throughout space, right? Um, if I was to do this in a very realistic way, the light area of this piece could be right here. While, right here. While it could turn a bit darker here, because of the light fall off you know your, your light has a fall off rate it has a hot spot and then uh, as it goes away from the hot spot it becomes less and less intense uh, or bright but in in this case since we're doing a a, a cell shaded look what i'm trying to do is okay it's going to all have the same intensity of light but I'm going to be very mindful of where the shadow, shadows are. Because in this example of yours, for example, you have shadows here. You know, this is a shaded area. But you don't have... But, but you have also shadows here, you know. You have shadows here. But this is lit. And this is a shadow. This is a shadow and this is lit. And this has... A reflection and this has shadow right and this has shadow and this has shadow and this has... so there are shadows in places where you they're right you know let's say your light's coming from this side that's why I chose this because your face is lit from this side so I chose the same as yours so if the face is being lit like this then there should be some shadow here, right? Obviously, you don't have to do all the cast shadows in a style like this, but I would recommend doing some, you know, for volume, for um, readability, for space, you know, for perspective and stuff. So that's what I did with the shadows. The shadows, I, I kind of tried to limit them to the direction uh, they should be, realistically speaking, or some of what they should be, uh, and I focus on simplifying them. You know, I have this area has shadow. Okay, this has shadow, this has shadow. You know, this is all shadow. This is all shadow. You know, big places where the shadows are. It's not small, you know, tiny lines that cut into surfaces because if tiny lines start cutting into surfaces, especially in this area, you're going to generate a lot of noise and it's going to make the image look flat a lot of the time because you have a limitation of tone. And if with that limitation of tones, you don't limit how many things you can represent, that representation uh, becomes way more confusing because, oh yeah, all of this should be shadow because it's not lit directly because it's occluded somehow but at the same time if everything that should be in shadow has a dark cast shadow on top of it it's probably going to make it look worse in this particular style so i simplify that and simplify the um you know the, the folds here you can have complex folds it's not that you can't but i, I thought in your case they were a bit too much I think they they were too much for this style and confusing as well because you have uh, you know reflections here you know 
but at the same time your leg it's got it has a shadow on that side so, so i saw, thought it was confusing so I, I i also changed the color of the tail because i thought okay i also changed the color of the tail because i saw it as an opportunity to have something that's kind of more reflective uh, uh than it is i would probably change the shape of the tail a little bit i didn't want to redraw your your piece entirely because it is kind of complicated um, and I had already rerun a lot, which is the other thing that you didn't ask about, but I should talk about because I've seen it, I've seen it in other pieces of yours, at least at the time. Uh, I don't know if, if it's the same right now. So, um, look at this right here. Let's rotate this. So it's less complicated. Okay. So this is the face of, the, of your character which is obviously a bit skewed to one side, and it's not about perspective, it's just that it's skewed. Uh, I tried to fix it in mine. Do, 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 do. Okay. It's obviously not perfect. Uh, it never is, don't worry. But the way I tried to fix it, you know, it was applying better form principles, and those form principles helped me a lot to inform the shadows of what I was doing. Um, the other thing about this, which is the main thing that I want to talk about, is this kind of line uh, can hurt a piece a lot, especially when you're doing a, a female char a character. If you're doing a man or, a, you know, a chaotic scene, I would see that working, but I don't think it helps a lot here. Uh, I don't know if you're working uh with your layers I, I don't know what you work on but your layers here i are kind of uh weird because you have shadows that go over the lines while everything else goes underneath the lines and then you have you know painting on top of the lines which is weird it makes it really confusing and if you want to work on one layer only, that's on you. I, I don't care, really. With this kind of style, I couldn't recommend it, but whatever. Uh, but it has to look cleaner, right? The rest area was the same. It was this kind of... This kind of line hurts your piece a lot. Why did this, this kind of line, right? You could be doing, you know, one line. Maybe you're like, yeah, but it doesn't look great. It looks a bit stiff. Okay. You can w go over the same line. I'm not using as in take. I'm not using, you know, you can modify it later if you want. You can sculpt it to have the pressure you want if you like using this kind of brushes like I do. I like using this kind of brushes. Um,. You know, what I see a lot here is kind of way too much wobbling. What you could have one line and make this clean. And on details, maybe, if you want. Boom, boom. Or, you know, gradient. Just have fun with it. But, you know, this kind of line really hurts a piece. It really does. Uh, it, it's the undoing of a drawing. Uh, it, it hurts the enjoyment of it as well. Because you look at this image, you're like, oh, this is pretty cool at this size. Right? Which is nice. Yeah, it's nice. Whatever. But then you look at it from up close and it's like, oh man, this is you know, kind of messy. And it's fine if you want that to be your style, but I think your work as it is could benefit a lot. And this is just my opinion. Could benefit a lot from being clean. Take your time, practice your lines, and you know, make them happen yeah. 
however you need them to happen. If you have to control Z a lot, that's fine. That's fine. If you ever see an artist like um, Art Germ, right, Stanley Law, he is the person who controls Z the most out of any artist I've ever seen. He does one line and he's like, eh, no, 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 no. And he does it time and time again until his line is the one he wants. And that's fine. There's nothing wrong with it. If anyone says there's something wrong with that, they're a fucking moron. Uh, it's better than you giving up and just drawing like this. I don't know if you draw with a tablet or if you draw with a mouse. If you draw with a mouse and you want this to be clean, you can use, you know, correction tools. Uh, I can see how oh, this is really hard to make. Okay, so to recap, what I basically did with this piece was clean up the lines, give the background a gradient of tone, I, I simplify the shadows, I added a cast shadow to the character and to the background and to itself, I changed some forms that were reading improperly. So that's it. Basically that. Have fun. Hopefully that helped. Uh, thank you for sending your work. Okay, this is the last one. Pointless field. You said, I need helps in terms of body proportions of a of a slightly overweight man. Colors on the suit itself. The clashing is intended, but I need to know if it's overdone or not. And cell shaded rendering slash sh shading. And you send uh, your character in, which is budget increase Charlie. The question of colors. Question of colors. I think they might be a bit too much because it's kind of hard from afar to tell the character apart because there's so many pieces of him uh, that it's hard to distinguish everything if you're looking at it from far away. When you look at him up close, yes, it is clashing. You say it's intentional, that's fine. But I could say it might be a bit overdone. Uh, uh, so the character can work with these colors, but I think uh, your biggest enemy right now is readability. Uh, the brown is super, super dark, and I, and I kind of had a problem with it when I was doing the, the paint over, because it was so dark that it made it look like I had a bunch of silhouettes put on top of each other. Uh, the other thing about the color choices, I would probably reduce the amount of colors. Right now you have one, two, three, four, five, four colors, four colors. You have the light uh, areas here, they're kind of a light, super light, yellowish, kind of off yellow, off, off white tone. You have the um, the golden, orange, yellowish areas. You have the green areas and you have the brown areas. I think the brown areas are a bit too big in comparison to every other color. 
and not big enough in terms of the overall design. So for example, when you look at Woodman, uh, he's all brown, you know, has his, <laughs> his gray shorts, yellow thingies, and green, you know, um, elastic man for his shorts. But when you look at yours, he kind of has this brown kind of thing, shoulder piece or whatever, back piece. But then he has bits and pieces everywhere. And I think that configuration of everything being basically the same size is what's bringing trouble to you. This configuration of small, 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 there's nothing that is that, that acts as a contrast to each other. Every shape is basically the same in terms of space they occupy. Uh, there is no, for example, let's say I, I, I paint over this. Uh, let's say I paint over this and I decided, okay, this entire thing is going to be green, right? This entire thing. Or, and I know you said you wanted to be clashing, but I think there is a limit. And um, your entire thing is like this. And you probably have, you know, something like this that comes already from this top area right here. You can just have it like this. Uh, this is just me playing around with it. I don't think um, this is necessarily what you should do. It's just my suggestion of something that could be done. You know, maybe replace this, replace this. And maybe have, instead of everything like that, you could have different shapes for the bands. Uh, maybe since there are a lot of pointy things like that, and like this, and on his head, you can maybe have something like that on the design, you know, uh, yeah, maybe even like this, you know, something like that, that, that helps a bit to To not have everything be the same pattern because it makes it look to me at least uh, a bit too much like a pattern right it has a, this area this outer part that is brown this part that is green and this part that is yellow this other part that's brown this part that's green and this inner part that is yellow this outer part that is brown and you know you have green and green just like this part right here and this part right here has green green brown and they all look very similar and in terms of design it's hard to to know where to look at it's really hard to know where to look at uh so so i would probably change that about it that is not so segmented to find a way to have better rhythm of the shapes of the design. Uh, I would simplify the amount of colors. I think this has too many accent colors. You know, green, yellow, and this off-white color, it seems to be, or off-yellow, or whatever. Um, it seems to be too much, in my opinion. Too much. Too many colors. I would probably simplify that. Um, but, but that's about it with color. I'm not a character designer, uh, so maybe I'm, I'm absolutely wrong with it. So what I focus with my um, with my paint over was first of all getting the drawing right. Drawing is kind of um, hard to understand 
if you start actually looking at it, I'm I know I'm supposed to be looking, you know, my vision is kind of on this area, right? My my line of sight is kind of on this area because this is doing this shape and this shape is doing this, you know, and this is doing this shape. So this means I'm looking down at this and I'm looking up at this. So I'm somewhere around here. You know, I'm looking at his crotch, right, directly. So that means a couple of things in perspective. So you, and, and 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 that's fine. But the biggest problem I found is that he's on this inclined platform, but he's standing like this. On this inclined platform, he's standing like that. You know, which means his platform is like this. So if he was a straight, you know, if the platform was a straight, he would be kind of like this and to the back. He would fall over. He looks like he would fall over. Or that he's balancing a bit too much. I, I don't think he looks very comfortable in this position. Um, because his feet feet are not on, uh, on the correct line, you know, his feet are on this line, his back looks like he's here, and he has all this weight to his back, he looks like he's going to fall down. So what I did was, first of all, and let me find it, redraw the pose. I think this is, yeah, re redraw the pose. I redrew him into this position, let me find just a second. Okay. <clears throat> Here it is. So I redrew him, you know, from this to this, so he would look like he is in the space. And basically his proportions are not wrong. You're asking about proportions. The proportions for someone who is overweight, as someone who is overweight, uh, are not that different. Obviously, you don't get taller if you are overweight. You don't get your head doesn't become bigger. Your hands don't become bigger. Your feet don't become bigger. Um, your skeleton doesn't become bigger. The only thing that happens is that you're adding mass to a body. So that means that places that have a, a distinction between each other because maybe bones go into one another or muscles go into one another, that distin dis distinction between those two areas is going to be uh, removed because you're going to have fat filling those areas. So imagine if you have this as a as an abstract shape, right? You have this shape right here, and you start adding fat on top of it, or, or any other you know thingy. You're going to start filling this up. So in time, it's going to become more of this. It's going to lose, or more of that actually, right? It's going to go kind of more like this. It's going to lose that initial definition and it's going to become bigger. So that's basically what you're going to see. It's not that the character changes in terms of the proportions of their skeleton and their their skeletal proportions. It's not like Wally, right? <laughs> but it's going to be uh, a change in terms of the definition of uh, the, their features, the, their Hips are going to be less defined. The distinction between the hips, the legs, and the chest is going to be less defined. It's going to be way more square, similar to what you have. So what I'm trying to say is you didn't do wrong in that regard. What I didn't feel is that this space, uh, the this space was properly conveyed, so that made your character have this massive front arm, a uh, leg. And this is way smaller everything else. So 
I tried to fix that. Uh, I think this looks a bit better in terms of um, proportions. You can still see this guy doesn't have, you know, this perfect uh, bodybuilder shape. He has, he's chubby. He has, uh, you know, you could make the legs bigger if you wanted. Um, I, I didn't, I, I, I didn't really pay attention to that. But you could make them bigger to look, you know, like maybe he gets fat on those areas. Uh, that's not a problem. So I redid that. Let's uh, find everything else. I did a face for uh, for the for his platform. You know, I didn't know the shape of the platform actually, so I just got it like that. Um, I did a base for him. You know, we hit the colors from your image. I colorized the lines like you had them in your style. I am the same with the uh, platform. I added some lights to him, some shadows to give him some volume, and then I gave him uh, some, you know, uh, color change here. You know, to erase some of that. There you go. In the areas of shadow, you shouldn't have that change. And then I added the uh, two kind of hologram thingies. You could add more tones. I don't think uh, that's a, a limitation on your part. Uh, you could have it the, the way you have it. Uh, but I think I, I would probably use gradients in that in that case. I would probably go and do something more um, into soft transitions instead. You know, something like that. But let's keep it as it was. Uh, but I think this works. It's, it's not very complicated. Boom. Um, you could add more contrast, you know, you could have more lights here, whatever. It's your choice, really. Then I added a background that I thought was good for the uh, to, to, to see the silhouette of the character properly. Yeah, that's that's a basic thing. Uh, but mainly that. Again, I think the, the biggest thing about your drawing is that it feels like it's hard to focus on anything. The background is not complemented the piece very well. I think it's it's a background that could benefit from being a little lighter. Like in my case, you know, I did that that way. Could be in other ways, but it could benefit from me lighter. You know, I I, I that this confused me a lot. This lower part right here. I think it's supposed to be the fire or whatever from the platform that is you know lifting up, lifting him up. But I don't think it works very well. I think it's very messy and doesn't look like light. If you want something to look like light, it should be lighter in value. If you look at this, you know, this light is darker than some of these parts. Same with his hovering screens. I feel like they should be a bit darker, uh, a, a bit lighter in regards to the rest of the image. You know, pim, pim. It could help you to have less uh, variation in the in the costume. Like this, I I, I honestly like this this uh, view a lot more. Uh, this one might be a bit too messy still, uh, but in this one I can see you know the merits of of these colors a lot more. Just because I simplify the shadows so as to not have so many divisions in everything, and that everything has this similar look of being divided into different tones. Like I said in the previous critique, there is a limit in cell shading where 
less is more. And at the same time, I've seen a lot of cell shaded looks, you know, kind of vectorized looks rather that are very realistic and that, you know, make these big transitions in colors and stuff. But I don't think this is what you're going for. And I think you have to be way more careful to get those working. And this is not what you're doing. I don't think. Um, and your piece is kind of hard to tell where the light is coming from. I suppose it's coming from above, but at the same time, this, you know, this reflection is pointing at something that is going off the, the picture and this one the same, which is weird because, you know, these are two completely different lights and this has a central um, light for the piece. It looks like Everything is shaded from inside out. And I think that can be confusing in terms of understanding volumes. And it can make your piece flat. Well, thank you uh, for listening. Hopefully I, this helped. Uh, apologies for taking so long to do it. Uh, I'll see you next time around. Have a, everyone have a... Happy holidays, so whatever you celebrate, you have a pain over for Christmas. Yay! Crimson Bush is coming to town and Ho 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 Feliz Navidad Crimbus Crimbus Cambrox Cambolio Bye everyone I'm going to die